Hello everyone. In this session, we will try to discuss a two part. First one is nothing but a pressure control valve. Another one is nothing but a flow control valve. See here, even this pressure control valve and as well as the flow control valve, we have dis discussed in depth in the, uh, while discussing with respect to the hydraulic circuits and hydraulic circuits and also the hydraulic valves. Now here in this case, just I am I am. Uh, I am not going in depth, just uh, I am briefing it, briefing it about the different types of the valves, what we are using in the case of either it may be the pressure control valve or it may be a flow control valve. Now the first one, first one what we are discussing is nothing but a direct type relief valve. See in most of the circuit diagrams what we are drawn in the case of the hydraul hydraulic circuits, there we are using the relief valves, even here also, even here also. Uh, in the case of the pneumatic circuits, pneumatic circuits, the relief wall is a must. The, the relief wall consists of a spring chamber where the puppet is placed with a spring force. A very simple schematic diagram shows the shows the relief wall. Now here, the pressurization of the puppet, the pressurization of the puppet is by means of the spring. There is a, another one which is called as a pressure adjustable screw by which a uh, because of the tightening a small amount of the pressure is increased on the on the spring it automatically locks the what we can say the inflow in firmly see this is a this is a small explanation with respect to the uh, direct type of the relief valve the next step what we are discussing is nothing but the up unloading wall see the unloading wall is a, another type of the wall <coughs> it consists of it consists of the control chamber with an adjustable spring which pushes the spool down. This wall has the two ports, one is connected to the tank port, another is connected to the pump port. The schematic diagram shows the, uh, what we can say the uh, unloading wall. Now here in this case the unloading wall, it consists of the uh, inlet port which is nothing but a pump port, the another one is nothing but a tank port. The uh, puppet, puppet or it may be something like what we can say a spool type, <coughs> a spool type it is there that the movement, the movement of the spool is taking place because of the spring, uh, spring pressure. Once if the, once if the pressure, pressurization is done automatically the, <coughs> the puppet will move up against the spring pressure and the flow is taking place. The next part what we are discussing is with respect to the sequence wall. The sequence sequence wall, the primary function of this is is the type of the wall is to direct flow and a predetermined sequence. It means that a uh, in a one sequence only in one sequence only the flow is taking place. It is it is used to operate the cycle of a machine. Uh, automatically, a sequence wall may be a direct pilot control or a remote pilot operated type is also available see depending upon the type of the application either it can be a direct direct pilot control or it may be a remote pilot control these uh, walls are controlled it consists of the two ports one is nothing but <coughs> main port connected to the main pressuring line the another port which is nothing but a secondary port it is connected to the to the secondary circuit the schematic diagram is also same as that same as that of the what we can say a unloading wall but here in this case the main pressure pressure line is there and a secondary port is also there main pressure line is nothing but a, uh, a inlet the secondary port is nothing but the outlet the spool movement is is done because of the pressurization of the uh, pneumatic or it may be the air or it may be the oil through the main line the next part what we are discussing is nothing but a counterbalance wall See the counterbalance wall is a, is a, another type of the another type of the wall which is maintaining a back pressure back pressure to prevent the load from failing it. See most of the most of the walls or it may be the hoses there may be a chances of failure when the pressurization is increased. To avoid that the counterbalance walls are, are used. The counterbalance wall can be used. Uh, as a braking wall for decelerating the heavy loads. These type of walls are used that is especially in the case of the lifting of the what we can say the heavy loads, heavy loads that too especially in the case of in the case of the what we can say the fluid power systems. The fluid is then 
allowed to escape and letting the load to descend under a controlled controlled way or it may be in a sequential way or in a smoother way these wants are normally closed until it acts upon by the remote pilot pressure sources see the schematic diagram shows the what we can say the counterbalance wall why we are calling it it as a counterbalance wall means there is a another one another one which is called as the uh, the load is load is load is applying it the spool movement it is taking place even even here also the spool movement the spool movement it is done by means of a, a small passage okay there is a control chamber even it consists of a pressure adjustable screws that pressure adjustable screws consists of uh, below that consists of a spring spring and as well as a drain that drain wall it is in turn connected to the tank the remote pilot operation is done very easily the next part what we are discussing is with respect to the pressure reducing walls see the pressure reducing wall is is also a, another type of wall which is having a major application that to especially sometimes if the system system needs a low pressure operation this this type is po possible and also a, in a generally generally speaking they are used for the operation for a branch circuits where the pressure may vary from from the main hydraulic pressure lines these type of pressure walls are used when the low pressures are required the schematic diagram shows the uh, pressure reducing wall the next part what we are discussing is with respect to the flow control wall the flow control walls are are the walls which is used especially to control the flow to control the flow the speed of the actuation can be controlled and as well as the regulated by a controlling the flow either it may be in one direction or it may be in the reverse direction a flow control wall can be regulated the flow or the pressure of the fluid the fluid flow is controlled by a varying the area of the wall opening through the which the fluid passes a very common example or it may be a simple example uh, with respect to the flow control wall uh, what normally we are using we are using at home is is a is uh, is the taps the pressure drop across the wall may keeps on fluctuating it in general the hydraulic systems may be may be a pressure compensating pump also the inlet pressure remains almost constant but the outlet pressure keeps on fluctuating depending upon the external load or it may be the opening what it has been done by adjustable screw the pressure compensated flow control wall maintains the maintains the constant flow throughout the movement of the spool which shifts the shifted shifts the uh, position position depending upon the pressures the next and as well as the simplest one what we are discussing is nothing but the butterfly walls see the butterfly walls as a name itself is suggesting it uh, the butterfly wall it can be drawn in a simpler way see here because of the movement because of the rotation because of the rotation of the uh, what we can say the flow adjustable screw if it is because of uh, adjustable screw because of the rotation the opening is taking place the flat which is in brown color that opening it is taking place and also the flow it is a continuous one the butterfly wall consists of a disc or it may be something like a plate shape which is a held in between the in between the passage of the flow of the air or it may be the oils the angle of the disc determines the restriction or it may be the flow of the uh, fluid the butterfly walls can be made to a, any size and which are also used widely application in the case of the flow of the gases or it may be even with respect to the hydraulic application also these walls have a many types and that depends upon the what we can say the pressure ranges and also the applications the next part what we are discussing is with respect to the the balanced wall see the balanced wall is a another, another wall normally which is used where the balancing is to be done balancing in the sense if the pressurization if the pressurization is controlled by means of a two plug and as well as the two seat mechanism by which automatically a perfect sealing it can be done very easily 
the opposite flow gives a little dynamic dynamic what we can say the reaction dynamic re, uh, dynamic reaction onto the actuator shaft it results in a negligible dynamic torque effect to avoid this dynamic reaction we are using the balanced valves however the leakage is more in these kinds of the valve because of the manufacturing defects or it may be the tolerances or it may be a worn out uh, as you know that here in this case in this case it consists of the two plugs as these two plugs these two plugs it should seat perfectly if it seats perfectly then automatically there won't be leakages if there is a, any manufacturing defects defects in the plugs automatically there will be a leakages will be there this is a small explanation with respect to the what you can say the balanced wall the next part what we are discussing is with respect to uh, the suspended seat type wall see the suspended suspended seat type wall is a another another type of the wall where where the uh, a suspended disc disc seats which performs performs the part of port opening and as well as the closing the advantages of this suspended seat type wall is that the sealing can be performed with a relatively a small switching movement even here also uh, the ports will be there the pressurization port is represented by means of a p the opening and as well as the closing or it may be a inlet port or it may be a outlet port is represented by means of the port a and as well as the port b the secondary seat disc seals the exhaust port b uh, whichever is is not functional such walls are generally provided with a manual overriding button at which each end of the spool to the manual manually move the spool the schematic diagram shows the what we can say a suspended type or a suspended seat type wall now here the crossover it can be done very easily the flow from the from the p to a and as well as b to r r is nothing but a reservoir okay that is also it is possible now even here also now b to b to r is possible now in the second case in the second case r to r uh, a to r is also possible and p to b p to b is also possible very easily see this is the this schematic diagram shows the four four what we can say the ports the port a is nothing but an inlet port port b is nothing but an outlet port the r is nothing but a reservoir port p is nothing but a pressurization port the next one what we are discussing is with respect to the walls see the walls as the name itself is decide or defines or it's a device which controls or it may be regulates the <coughs> commencement or commencement termination or it may be a direction and also the pressure or the rate of the flow of the fluid under the pressure which is delivered by the compressor or by means of a vacuum pump the walls are uh, a one sort or it may be a performs the three main functions the main functions are they controls the they controls the supply of the air air to the power unit and the second one is they provides a signal which governs the sequence sequence of the operation they acts as a interlocking inter interlocking on the safe device and these type of walls are little importance because of the pneumatic control for the most of most of the important most of the parts now here in this case as we know that uh, the walls in the in the previous sessions we had discussed with respect to the three different type one is nothing but a direction control wall or it may be a flow control wall or it may be the pressure control wall the another set of the walls normally what we are discussing is in further classes is nothing but a non return wall